Hello Gemini, welcome to Monarch Intuition and today I'm going to be doing your January 2023 mid-monthly check-in reading for you. So if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is I like to pull one major arcana to see the energy and then clarify with a different deck. So what's going on for the sign of Gemini? What do we need to know for you? One more shuffle. Okay, we have the Fool. Beginning a new situation within your life. Okay, so here's the thing. I feel like you have some sort of suspension. You're about to be on a new path, right? Maybe you've been sitting in this stagnation energy, wondering what you can do. Here's the thing about the Fool. It's a blank slate, a new beginning. But it's also very easy to go back into doing the things that you did in the past that can ruin a new situation for you. For example, say you have um, money spending problems. Now you have a good job and you have a bigger paycheck, but you still haven't worked out those money spending problems. Like that's the situation is that old habits can come into the new beginning and mess it up for you. So if you've been sitting in suspension, you're supposed to be there to understand what is your fundamental flaw. Why can you not go forward on a new path? What is it about you and a lesson from your previous cycle do you have to learn that you haven't sought after or you haven't sought? And it could be within, you know, just interpersonal relationships, Gemini. You are a, you know, a talkative sign. You rule communication. Maybe your communication is off. Maybe you overshare. Maybe you just um, are a little bit flighty with your words. So it's like looking at your own flaws right here, and I'm not trying to call you out, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or anything like that. I'm just going off of base things that could be, you know, considered negative traits about Gemini, quote unquote, right? And not bringing them into the new cycle for you, all right? So what do we need to know about this fool? We do have Mercury retrograde ending soon, so that does represent, you know, a brand new aspect. We came into the new year on a retrograde and so I kind of feel bad for all the people who made all those you know new year's resolutions because it's kind of like you probably shouldn't do that because trying to start anything during a retrograde is really bad. You should just focus on yourself. But for those who haven't made you know you know new year's resolutions or who really truly want to make a good new year's resolution have a good outcome this is the time period to do that to just start out on a good foot. And maybe this you know that, that full moon in Cancer, like, kind of got people messed up. So, here's the thing. We're moving forward. Mercury retrogrades ending. It's a new year, new cycle. What's going on? We have the Ten of Cups. We have the King of Swords. And we have the Nine of Swords in reverse. You have a really good situation coming up for you, Gemini. A really happy situation. And it involves communication with the King of Swords. Intellectual communication. So I kind of feel like what you need to understand is also maybe just listening. Because the King of Swords listens and then gives an opinion after he has all of the facts. Okay? The Knight of Swords, your energy, is that you rush into a situation and just bombard people with information. Because that is the whole point of Gemini to release information from the sun. But here's the thing, your nine of swords is cutting, coming out. What you need to do is you need to get rid of all these different things, these rabbit holes, because Gemini's can go down rabbit holes really easily because you have a lot of information to share and only grasp at the things that are relevant to a situation. Or maybe instead of just giving a bunch of opinions that can bombard someone is to sit there, think about it and say, I'll get back to you on that. I feel like this is a time period where you are going to be more so evolving into the highest state of Gemini, which is delivering the sharp truth of the sunlight, because remember the sun dictates what Gemini is going to say to the other planets. It's the messenger, right? Dictating that and only speaking the facts, not caring about, you know, the emotional realm, not caring about this. This is it. Not going down all these different, you know, nine of swords energy because that's the thing about Gemini is that you can get paranoid by all of the information. Like, oh, did I tell this person this? Did I tell them that? And go down all these rabbit holes to make sure that they get the truth. But here's the thing. Sharp, direct communication is what they want. And I kind of feel like that's what the Ten of Cups is for you is like people just want what it is. So I do see that you have a major upgrade right here going from the Knight, Knight of Swords to the King of Swords. You're overcoming this nine of swords in reverse right here. You're deciding to drop all the swords and saying, yeah, no, 
I only am going to go with what is important. Moving past um, the Nine of Swords is um, the culmination, and then the Ten is the final conclusion, okay? And that's what I'm seeing right here is that this is the culmination of something. The Ten of Swords is actually not that bad. I mean, it does have negative connotations to it. However, like all tens, it represents the ending of a situation. That is as bad as it's going to get, or as good as it's going to get. So the Nine of Swords represents all of these anxieties, and you're saying, you know what? I'm cast them out and move on to the ten and face the ending. And that's what's important for you to understand is that you're waiting for a conclusion. And I kind of feel like that's what's also coming out is you have a conclusion and then you have a new beginning. So maybe you're worried about the conclusion. Maybe you're wondering how the conclusion is going to play out for you. I feel like it's going to be okay with the Ten of Cups, but let's clarify that. I'm not going to just jump out and say everything's okay right now, but we have the Hanged Man. We have the Knight of Cups. Oh, the Temperance wants to come out with the Eight of Cups. You're in a suspended state right here. You know, that's what I was talking about with the full being in that suspension energy. You're moving on, trying to figure out what is the wrong thing that keeps messing up, you know, your life and preventing you from evolving. Or it's trying to give you that, you know, that clue that's going to really help you in the next cycle. So it's about suspension. It's about taking the facts of a situation and leaving behind all the things that aren't there because the temperance will alchemize with the two cups that are missing. So that's what I'm seeing for you is that ponder a situation. Remember I said, just sit there and think about it with the hanged man energy. You're not, you know, um, you're not in stagnation. You're not in, you know, self-sacrifice mode. It's more so or less getting your emotions under control getting everything that you need, all your facts and everything in order, and saying this is the direct point of a situation. Not adding in your own emotions, not adding in anything else. This is the facts. I have all the paperwork behind it. Moving away from the Eight of Cups because it's not complete to the Temperance because you have the Temperance alchemizing the Two Cups right there. So it's also about moving forward to find the Ten of Cups. Sometimes you have to leave what's comfortable to get the full Ten. King of Swords energy, Seven of Pentacles, Four of Wands, and the Four of Pentacles. Growing a celebration, but also holding on to your own thoughts right here. Growing, formulating, and concocting an idea by holding on to these different ideas behind yourself. So, for instance, say you get a stack of papers that's like that big, right? It's a big stack of papers, and you have to sit there, and you have to look at it, and you have to hold on to it and read it all, right? But most of it it's kind of like not that important. It is important, but it's not the facts of a situation. It's like highlighting, you know, in a textbook. For example, when you highlight in a textbook, you're only supposed to highlight key points. Like some people, they highlight the whole page. It's like, that's not the point. The, the whole point is to highlight this individual phrase. So that way that sticks out in your mind on a test. And then that is what you're supposed to be doing. Holding on to only what is important. Not all of it. Nine of Swords, the Magician, the Five of Wands. It's coming prepared. It's coming prepared. You are being prepared for something right here. You're being prepared to fight the Five of Wands as the Magician. So you need to cast down your Nine of Swords energy because if you come in prepared with the facts always in your next cycle, and maybe that's what you have to understand about this past cycle, is if you're always prepared, no one can knock you down because you are always the magician. The King of Swords and the Magician are representation of Aquarius energy, your fellow air sign, the fellow fixed air sign. So it's like while all these people are trying to scrounge around within the Five of Wands, you're coming in as this magician energy saying, well, I have mastery over the five of wands. I have mastery over this competition because I am able to only pull from what I need to know. You're moving away from all of these things and condensing it down to just very few important matters within your life, maybe within your own interpersonal life, your own 
you know, whatever it is. You're only focusing on things that actually, you know, truly make you happy, truly, you know, move you forward within your life. You have the lovers, your energy, the page of cups, and the eight of wands. You're receiving some sort of information, some sort of downloads, possibly. The lovers is connecting you to a higher power, and that is how you're going to fill up your cups right here. And it's coming in quickly. You're receiving a lot of information all at once to just kind of sort through something. The three of wands to send out justice, because here's the thing. A lot of arrows are coming down into this cup, right? And they're coming towards you, but you have to make the decision on what is true and what is false. What is false? Six of wands with the six of swords. That's false. What's true? The ten of wands with the five of cups in reverse. Uh, okay, I'm going to get you one more for that. The Six of Cups. What's true is the Ten of Wands with the Five of Cups in reverse, Six of Cups. <sighs> Easy victory isn't true. You don't get victorious energy by just not having to put in any energy or effort. Okay, so here's the thing. Sometimes people seem in life to just get everything that they want, right? For example, like those girls who do professional escorting, right? They go to like Dubai and whatever. A lot of people say, well, you know, they didn't really have to do anything for that. No, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, body work. It's a lot of staying up, texting people work. It is a business, right? It's not just because they're pretty, people throw money at them. They have to network. They have to talk to people. They have to, you know, always be on their A game. They have to always look good. Like, nothing in life is going to be easy. Okay? Hard work is what gives you the two of cups behind you, alchemizing with the cups with the temperance energy to hand it off to you. So I kind of feel like, in a way, mastery with the magician right here understanding that the magician needs to put in a lot of hard work in order to be able to become the magician he has to know you know geometry astronomy astrology algebra whatever physics he doesn't just wave his wand around with you know a couple of crystals and say i'm going to summon this no he has to know proper rites rituals the proper summoning order how to do it on a certain day, certain moon. Like, it's not easy to just be a magician. It's not easy to be a scientist. It comes with a lot of setbacks, a lot of failures. But first you don't succeed, try, try again. And I kind of feel like that's what this is for you, Gemini. And I feel like you're getting the opportunity to try, try again where you failed previously. And this time the universe is saying, okay, Gemini, here's the thing. This time, you have the opportunity to make it look easy by following this step. You have to look at all of these things and only find what is important to you, what is like the key critical pieces of information. You have to read all of it, but what is the main source? And once you understand the main source, you can give a very direct, you know, analogy behind something. It's kind of like this. Have you ever watched the movie Pinocchio? How um, he went to Pleasure Island and he was slowly turning into a donkey while the other kids were turning into donkeys and then Jiminy Cricket came and saved him? Okay, that is actually an allegory to, I believe it's the book Exodus and the Bible. So when we look at um, the book Exodus, it's talking about how all the firstborns that come out of the womb belong to God, right? And you can trade a donkey for, you can ransom your donkey for a lamb. But if you don't choose to ransom that donkey, then you have to kill it. 
but all firstborns belong to God. So that represents even if you want to kill off that donkey, you still have to ransom it because it belongs to God. I know it's a weird story, it's a weird analogy, but that's why they were turned to donkeys on Pleasure Island, representing that some of them, you know, were saved, because in the original book, some of them were saved. However, a lot of them were, you know, stripped and sent off to the mines or killed. Jiminy Cricket was acting like his conscience as kind of like a guardian angel to come in and ransom Pinocchio because he was Geppetto's, in a way, firstborn. Because he had to be ransomed. So that's kind of what this is right here. It's like, you see that allegory of knowing just weird off the wall information, how it pertains to media, how you can correlate two things together to really give like an off the wall look at something, a different perspective with the hanged man. And that's kind of what I'm seeing for you, Gemini, is that you have to know something so that way you can give your own perspective on it, but your own perspective comes across as the magician of something that is just completely off the wall, random, but it works, it makes sense. The Ace of Cups and the Four of Swords. The Ace of Cups and the Four of Swords, and your intellect will always be underneath you. You're sleeping on your own intellect right here. Your own intellect, the way that you think, the way that your mind can bounce information around and around. That's what you're sleeping on. Because you take on all of this information all at once and you go on all these rabbit holes and you try to tell people all these different things instead of saying, this is false, this is false, this is important, and only working with what is important right here. And this could be within, you know, your own daily life. Tools, buying clothes, you know, managing your time. The Hierophant energy structure and order. So let's look at your um, Awaken Oracles. You have Smile and Bliss. So keep on smiling. Be approachable. Maybe that's another thing that you're not dealing with right now. I know a lot of people say oh, you should smile more. I, in a way, it does work. You want to get tips, you got to smile. Um, bliss, it's about working hard gets you where you want to be. Nothing comes freely, nothing comes easily. But if you work hard now, you will have a blissful state later. have answers, wisdom, learning, communication, tradition, contemplation, wise counsel. Spiritual meaning is divine aid, creative spark, and initiation. You have Rado, speed your journey, ease a transition, aid communication, bring good news, and find your spiritual way. Cooperation, Dwarf, Resourceful. So I feel like in a way, your resourcefulness allows you to work with other people, okay? You have to have cooperation with working with other people and your resourcefulness is what is important. You need to know a lot of facts, you need to know a lot of things, but you don't need to have and you can have off the wall information, that's fine, but it has to be, you know, well thought out information. It can't just be like all these crazy different things at once, right? So you're resourceful, you have a lot of knowledge, you can cooperate with other people right here. I feel like um, cooperation is important, but also having mastery over a situation, that initiation with the magician, maybe that's what you're looking for. You're trying to initiate yourself in like a, you know, maybe a fraternity, maybe into a different school, whatever, but it's kind of like um, getting into Harvard or Yale or MIT or any of those things. They want, you know, mastery of off-the-wall knowledge. They don't want just the basic paper. They want, do you actually know what it means? Kind of like that story of Pinocchio. Do you really know what it means? 
and that's the whole situation for you. So um, let's look at your uh, what are these? It's Halloween oracles, kind of like you know Snow White. Snow White was a very occultic story, so I won't get into it. I'll tell you about it all later. Like. It'll all make sense soon. Just a couple more months. Spider, community, and web weaving, night song, hidden talents. Connecting things together is very important. Night song, hidden talents, maybe that's a skill that you need to develop, or maybe that's a skill you have. But in order to connect things together, you have to take important information. Now, you can't just tell off all your information at once. You have to give it out in, you know, little bits, right? And work through the situation. Because otherwise, if you just overload a situation, you know, all at once, people are going to be like, I don't understand. But your ability to, you know, pinpoint accuracy, deliver a truth, that is what your hidden talent is. So let's look at your spellcasting oracle cards. have animals, you have strength. So pay attention to your animals right here. Focus on your animals. Focus on your spirit, spiritual guides. With your strength energy, that is what's going to give you strength through something is you're going to see an animal, you're going to understand the meaning of an animal. Maybe it's the animal in a song or an animal within, you know, like a movie. For example, Jiminy Cricket was... Crickets are actually supposed to be a symbol of good fortune, a symbol of conscience, a symbol of the angels. Like, why do each one of the Disney princesses have, like, a specific animal that follows them around? Like, Aurora, not Aurora, Cinderella had mice. Mice means you have an advantage over a situation. Mice are very, you know, industrious creatures. They can figure out how to make stuff at, off the fly. Kind of like how her fairy godmother just appeared and made something for her, or the mice made something for her. Like, those were her spiritual guides, right? Or, um, Aurora and the Three Fairies. That's kind of what I'm seeing right here, is the animal that is assigned to you, the animal that, you know, really fits your soul, it's guiding you. Now, I can't, you know, just tell you what your animal is, because everyone, you know, whatever. And in fact, that's not even like my um, form of divination. So I feel like you're going to need to do a little soul searching and finding the animal that is important to you. What really just piques your interest? What is you? All right. Like if you were an animal, what type of animal would you be? And then what does that animal represent? And why would you be that animal? Because once you understand what that animal represents, it will move you forward in your life and be like, oh, that animal is supposed to be, you know, um, intelligent. It's supposed to be able to make sense of information that doesn't make sense. Well, that's probably what you're supposed to do is kind of like be a scientist or, oh, that animal is very strong, um, but it's also very intelligent. How does like a beaver build a dam? Well, maybe you have to go into being an architect. Like it's, it's that simple. Like once you find out your animal, and you see what it does, you'll be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, that makes sense. So, um, yeah. Anyway, Gemini, I hope you enjoyed this reading. And I think I got all your cards. Yeah, I did. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I'll talk to you later.